Welcome to Hop and Hen Farm. I'm Dawn, this is Steve Ford. Uh, we're the owners. Um, we're a diversified farm in Henniker, New Hampshire. We've been doing this for about six years now. Uh, we are certified farmers in, certified organic farmers for our vegetables and our fruits. And we're working toward our certification for our poultry. We raise broiler chickens, laying hens, and Thanksgiving turkeys. We sell our products at the Henniker Community Market, the Concord Farmers Market, and the Colby Hill Inn Restaurant. So this is our sixth year of farming at Hop and Hen Farm, and we came to this um, a little differently than most new farmers. We had been gardening in a suburban garden for 30 something years. We've always tried to do things naturally, to be organic. We were members of Nova Massachusetts before we came to New Hampshire. Um, read Mother Earth News, Organic Gardening Magazine, always believed in eating wholesome and fresh foods. And about nine years ago, we were trying to envision what we would do in our retirement. And we wanted to come back to New Hampshire and we thought we'd buy the farm. So we looked and hunted and found this beautiful piece of property. And I thought we were going to be homesteading, just raising vegetables and animals for ourselves, but Stephen's retirement plans were much grander, and now we are a farm. Um, it's been a lot of work, but a lot of fun. Um, when we were back in our suburban home, we had a, far, a vegetable garden, and then we, Steve was a beekeeper, so we had small animals, and then we got bigger animals, we got laying hens and I consider that our gateway drug. So we started out with eight laying hens and we'll show you our very first chicken coop, which is down here and how we started. So we, our topic today is uh, starting an organic poultry and vegetable farm. And as Don said, we, we started uh, six years ago. And the spot where we were just a little while ago was actually where we had our first uh, tent that we would have at the end of the driveway to sell our excess vegetables. Um, and now we're standing in front of our, our chicken coop that we actually brought up from Massachusetts when we moved here. Um, as Don said, we started with uh, laying hens. So we're gonna go inside in a minute and you'll, you'll see what we have in there. Some fun, fun little critters. Uh, but um, this is really our, uh, where we do our brooding for our broilers and turkeys. And it is our winter coop for our uh, hens, uh, our layers in the, in the, the colder months. Um, I built this down when we were down in Massachusetts and uh, we really like the, the building, fits nice here. And um, so why don't we go inside and see what's in? And go right in there. So this is our seventh batch of broilers for this season. Uh, there should, there's about 80 broiler chicks in here. Um, they're a little, about a week and a half old. Um, and they'll, they'll stay in here for another week and a half. Basically when they're three weeks old is when we put them out to pasture. And we're going to talk a lot more about that in a little bit. But um, as you can see, they have a nice, pretty open area, um, a heat lamp, water. The paper plates are where their lunch was. <laughs> um, so they have, of course, devoured that. and. Um, they're uh, pretty happy and just contented right now because it's their afternoon siesta. So, as I said, this was our seventh batch. We'll do eight for the season. Um, okay, and where we're going to go next is to look at um, our hens and pullets. So where our layers are during the rest of the, uh, the, rest of the summer. And we can walk down that way. So these are our layer hens. Uh, we have two structures in here. First off, you'll see there's a fence around them. And the fence is really more for their protection to keep predators out. 
than to keep them in, because if they really want to, they'll hop the fence. But generally, they'll stay right in here. Uh, and we move this fence, it's portable fencing. It is electrified, not right now. Uh, but we can move this around as we need to um, so that they are getting fresh grass and uh, fresh spots, new bugs and uh, vegetation to, to play in. Uh, we have two structures. The structure over there is a pullet tractor and that, those are our younger layer hens. They're not ready to lay yet. Uh, they were purchased as chicks um, in May and now they're probably, what, four months old? Um, and in another couple months, they'll, they'll start laying. So we have 12 in, in there. And again, we move that tractor around each, each day or every couple of days uh, within the fence. The adult layers, uh, most of them are uh, two, anywhere from two and a half to a year and a half old. We have a couple older ladies in here um, that we've had almost since we moved here. Uh, and they're just, they're a blast. I mean, we love the hens. Uh, they all have their own personalities and character uh, and they give us a lot of eggs. So typically in the peak part of the season, we'll, you know, the, the 24 layers that we have as adults, uh, we'll get close to a dozen and a half to two dozen eggs a day. Um, starting this time of year, they tend to tail off uh, <clears throat> and they'll give us probably uh, anywhere from half a dozen to a dozen a day. Um, the other things um, in terms of organic, uh, so for us, it's important that our, our chickens have access to soil uh, because the soil is where plants grow, it's where bugs are, it's where all the nourishment um, that these animals get kind of derives. Um, and they do get 100% uh, organic feed as, as their feeding supplement. Um, so that's, that's kind of the broil, the, sorry, the layer hens. Um, and again, once December or so rolls around, we move them up to the, that coop that we were just at, and they'll have access to the outdoors from there, but they'll be uh, sheltered in the, in the cold winter months inside. Um, so that's that. And where we'll go next is where we uh, pasture our broilers. So I want to just go back in history just a little bit. Um, Don mentioned that we started this uh, endeavor six years ago, and in 2015 we raised our first batch of broiler hens, and our chickens, I should say. So that year we did a hundred birds, and you know we did a bat three batches. There were 30 birds in the first batch, and in the second batch, and 40 in the third one, and we thought, wow, that's a lot of chickens, and. <laughs> Uh, this year, we're on target to raise eight batches, each one with uh, 80 to 100 birds. We'll probably uh, raise uh, about not quite 700 broilers, and then we have another 25 to 30 turkeys that we're raising. And we might get to see those a little bit later. But uh, yeah, so it's been a pretty steady progression of um, raising birds over the last few years and you know and, it, and it's been really uh, a good business for us. Um, so I want to talk a little bit more about the broilers and what we do with them. Uh, so behind me there's two pens uh, and each pen holds up to 80 birds um, and uh, the pen on the right is uh, those birds are approximately seven weeks old uh, so next week, uh, we will process those birds, slaughter them, and uh, package them, and prepare them to sell at markets. Uh, and um, behind, you know, sort of around that pen, hopefully you can see a bunch of rectangles where the pen has been. Um, it's been um, moved daily, sometimes twice a day toward the very end. 
uh, so that, again, the broilers have access to soil and all the great things that good soil brings. So good plant uh, life, um, insects, and then of course they get their grain supplements, which is 100% organic. The pen to the left uh, also has 80 birds, um, and they still have about another four weeks to go before we're processing those. Um, and so you can see over here uh, that there's not as many rectangles because they haven't been outside that long. Uh, they've basically been outside for just over a week. Uh, and the pens, for anybody starting, uh, this to me is like a really great way to uh, get started with uh, raising your own animal proteins. Okay, well, we have made our way over. Uh, our property is 23 and a half acres. Um, we've made our way over onto another part. And here are our turkeys uh, this year. So we, there are, this tractor holds uh, 26 turkeys. Um, we will divide these this week, actually, um, and, and put half in another tractor. But that we do the same process that we do with our broilers uh, in terms of moving them daily. Um, and we have a lot, we have over an acre of uh, area which to pasture the turkeys on. Um, these turkeys are about seven weeks old right now, and um, they'll be ready to go the weekend before Thanksgiving. Um, one of the things I wanted to talk about, and I think this is really critical, especially if you're thinking about raising any kind of animal, um, whether it's poultry or um, other mammals, is what are you going to do when that animal is ready to be slaughtered? Um, so Don and I both think it's really important that you experience that process of the slaughtering and processing of the animal at least once or twice um, in your time. It, it really brings home the sacredness of um, that animal. I mean, we're relying on these animals to provide sustenance for us and for, for those that, that purchase them. And going through that process really, um, it's a little eye-opening. Um, and yes, it can be tedious, but it also is a, a real great opportunity to just learn and respect um, the lives of those animals. Um, so we process almost all of our own birds um, on farm. Uh, in past years, we've actually um, sent our turkeys out to a processor um, just because they're pretty big uh, and, and physically it's hard to, to handle. Um, which brings me to the next thing I wanted to talk about, which is uh, if you decide that you are not going to process your own birds, uh, it's critical that you figure out your plan for how you're going to have them processed before you actually go and get the birds and um, you know have them be ready to be processed and then figure out what to do. So. The day you get your birds at the latest should be when you have a plan, if you're going to send them out, that you already have your date lined up. And uh, so I, we, we've heard too many stories about other folks who got chickens, they got a pig, they got any kind of animal, raised it up, and then didn't know what to do with it because they weren't going to kill it themselves and they weren't going to process it. So really figure that out ahead of time. That, that's a key lesson um, for what you want to do. And there's lots of resources, and Don will probably talk about some of those in a little bit, about you know, what, you know, how you would go about doing it yourself and, and so forth. So these are all the animals that we have on our farm today, other than the cat that lives indoors. Um, and uh, I guess next we're going to go talk about our vegetable operation and uh, that way. We'll take you over there. So. Yep. So far we've talked about our, mostly our poultry, 
Um, but now we want to talk a little bit about our sort of progression through uh, our vegetable growing. And, and of course that is a certified organic uh, uh, operation. operation. Um, so the first year I think we had four 100 foot beds. Each bed was probably about four feet wide. And we grew some tomatoes and it was a pretty dismal year actually that year. Um, we uh, realized how fertile the soil is for things besides vegetables, and in particular for weeds. Um, weeds really kind of took over that year. So we, we went to a lot of workshops and learned about weeding and we learned about weed management. And so the next year we kind of got up to like an eighth of an acre, uh, did, did pretty good, I think. Um, we got a lot of different vegetables going and kind of figured out what things we grew well and what we didn't. And of course, that's an ongoing process. Um, we learn a little every year about what we do well and what we don't and uh, what vegetables do well here. Um, today, we actually grow on about a half an acre um, and that includes our high tunnel, which we just put in last year. Um, the, uh, we do about 30 different vegetables um, over the course of a season. Uh, we Generally, our season starts um, in March, where we're getting uh, seedlings going. Um, we, we do almost all of our own seedlings uh, and transplants, and then uh, usually, so here in, we're in zone 5A, uh, our elevation is about 600 feet, and we uh, are able to get things out. Uh, some transplants we can get out uh, as early as the beginning of May, but most of them are sort of mid-May, uh, early June, uh, if they're not in the tunnel. And, um, and then our season, historically, has, at least in the field, has pretty much wrapped up um, toward the end of September. Cold weather crops we can get through um, uh, maybe into October, but certainly beginning of November, things are pretty much shut down out there. As I said, the high tunnel that's over here on my right, that um, is brand new for us. Um, we actually put our first crops in there uh, this spring. So in there we have tomatoes, peppers, cucumbers, uh, lots of greens, and our, our kale. Um, we decided we would try that inside. And we're gonna learn how, how that works for us uh, going into this winter. Um, you know, we're, we believe a lot in organic farming, uh, and organic has come to mean a lot more to us than it did 10 years ago when I thought anyway, organic was, well, you just throw natural fertilizers and um, compost on your, your crops. Um, becoming certified organic really opened our eyes, but has been a, a worthwhile process for us. Um, we uh, basically do a lot of nutrient management. Um, we pay a lot of attention to our soil health and what's in there. Uh, and we're trying to use practices that we think are truly sustainable um, for growing and uh, ongoing. So I guess that's kind of our farm. But Don's going to talk a little bit about a lot of the resources that we've had that have helped us over the years and kind of get from starting at ground zero, <laughs> where there was nothing here except grass, uh, to, to our, what we are today. So, I think it's important to realize you don't have to do this alone to be a, a new farmer, that there are a lot of resources out there, um, such as NOFA, NOFA, New Hampshire. We belong to NOFA, Massachusetts, even before we came up to New Hampshire to this farm. And the workshops and lectures and conferences are invaluable. Um, and there are other NOFA NOFA chapters throughout New England. Um, the University of New Hampshire Cooperative Extension 
has been great with their workshops and classes. And even now, where we all have to watch Zoom meetings, it's great that I can go to a Zoom class in Littleton and not have to drive. Um, that's, maybe that's the only benefit of this pandemic. Um, the Small Beginning Farmers in New Hampshire group has been invaluable in that they also provide classes and workshops and they have equipment that you can borrow and rent if you're a member. Uh, we've, we borrow their chicken processing equipment and there are many of those units located throughout the state. Um, the NRCS, which is part of the U.S. Department of Ag, has been really helpful to us and other farmers, helping us to be better farmers, to help us with high tunnels, help us to learn about um, saving our soils, um, the importance of washing the soils not washing away. So they've been really helpful to us. Um, and networking, just l learning from other farmers. I mean, we are not really in competition with our local farmers. We are learning so much from them um, as part of this craft group. This craft workshop here has showed you. Um, we've learned a lot from Bob at Kearsage Gore, Denise at Terra Organics, and um, Henry at Dunroving Farm has helped us a lot with our learning about chicken processing and how to be better chicken farmers. Um, so you don't have to do everything alone and learn it all alone. Um, there's, there are great resources out there to help new farmers. So that's my two cents. <laughs> so um, one other thing I just want to talk about is very often we hear, oh, it's so expensive or it's so difficult to get certified organic. And I really kind of disagree with that. Um, first off, uh, part of the farm bill actually makes it pretty inexpensive to get certified organic. Um, you have to pay the costs up front, but it does, um, there is a cost share payment back uh, to cover a lot of the certification cost. Um, it's been anywhere from 50 to 75 percent of that. So um, for a small farm like us, uh, our certified organic vegetables, our out-of-pocket cost, um, including our soil testing, is, uh, is well under $100. Um, so may maybe it's 150 tops. Uh, um, and then, um, you know, the, the real work in getting certified organic is, of course, paperwork. It's understanding the rules, knowing what you can do, uh, and all of that is actually pretty easy if you just sit down during the winter and kind of go through it and then um, find somebody who's already done it. And, the, you know, everybody we've ever talked to has been great about helping us figure out, you know, okay, so what does that mean and what, what can we do? So anyway, that's my plug on, um, on uh, certified organic and, and doing it. And um, just, you know, I think want to thank you all for taking the time to come visit us at Hop and Hen Farm. You know, our love of farming in part is because we love learning. And uh, farming is, a, if you like to learn, you're going to love farming. <laughs> um, and uh, we're still learning. We're still growing, no pun intended, uh, personally and, and uh, as farmers. Um, and uh, yeah, so you know, talk about questions and everything else, I guess, at the Zoom call. Mm -hmm.